and welcome to this very rare Southampton video as we are about to play in the playoffs against West Brom. Now I thought I'd make this video because obviously it's a big game, well big two games as it is two legs. And I thought I'd just discuss it, get your guys thoughts in as well in the comments, uh, whether you agree, disagree, what your opinions are, what you would like to see, whether that be in the lineup or whatnot. But I'm just going to waffle for 15 minutes talking about Southampton, going on tangents no doubt as usual. But let's just start off, we'll have a quick little talk about the Leeds game, because obviously going into the Leeds game we're very out of form, playing pretty poorly, just sort of not clicking at all as a team. Now obviously we did have a very long run it was like 11 games in six weeks or something like that right I don't know if that's exactly right but it was something similar to that a lot of midweeks a lot of constant games and obviously it took it out of us really um it felt like a lot of the games we just sort of were a little bit sluggish a little bit lethargic you could say and then this Leeds game with a full week's training a full week of rest really without actually having to play a midweek you could see the difference of performance there was a game plan that fit the team against Leeds that fit against how they want to play and we dominated really I mean we played really well I have to say, the way we countered, the way we used position, especially playing out from the back, was very direct and clinical. And then in the second half, we sort of just soaked up all the pressure and Leeds didn't really have anything. It felt, honestly, that second half felt like I was watching Southampton play against someone who's taken the lead against us. It felt very toothless and it felt like defensively we were actually solid for once. But the main success for that game against Leeds was obviously the slight tweaking of the system. Now, people getting a little bit excited. We played a three at the back, three slash five in out of position, right, um, for the transitions. But the main thing about that system was we were playing away to one of the best teams in the league. Obviously, they finished third higher than us. They were going to be front-footed because they needed to win. Um, regardless of the result against, you know, Ipswich and, and Huddersfield or whatever that, that doesn't matter really. They had to win the game regardless. And they were going to press higher because their leads and they're one of the best teams in the league. They're not Rotherham who are going to sort of sit back and allow you to play with the ball. So obviously we're going into that game knowing leads are going to want to press us, knowing leads are, want to get, are going to want to be front-footed and trying to create chances early. And that is probably why we went for the free, free at the back, more defensively solid, more defensively sound, you could say. And it worked. It worked. Simp simply put, it worked. But that doesn't mean you're working against everyone. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to play free at the back and be more sort of 50% possession, not sort of dominant, or as dominant, you could say, that we've been this season against Rotherham or against Stoke or against other teams that are sort of sitting mid-table in relegation, you're not going to play that way. So don't get this idea where people are suddenly going, oh, we played this system against Leeds, it worked well, we played well, why weren't we doing this all season? Because it wouldn't have worked against the majority of the teams all season. Like People got to realise that you make game plans based on the teams you're playing against. And when we have that sort of run of 11 games in, in six weeks or five weeks, you don't really have the time to change system, to change formation, to change how we play. Because you just don't have the training sessions available to make those changes significant. Because you're not going to go out there and go, boys, today we're playing a 4-4-2 diamond. And they're going, we have never trained this, we haven't played this, and we're going out there against another professional team and just playing a brand new system that we have not played yet. You don't do that, simply. You need to put it on the training pitch first before it's ever going to work. So obviously that week of training helped develop that system, and it's a system we can use now. Um, will we see it used a lot? Maybe. Um, we can go into the West Brom game now because it sort of goes into that. How I would see us set up against West Brom away from home, obviously, in the first leg. And this is where the managers really, this is their job to make these big decisions. Because for me, I'd be 50-50. Do we play the same way we have all season? Or do we play this different system that we did against Leeds? Because you've got to see it like this. If this was a normal league game, if we were playing away at West Brom just in the championship, would West Brom be pressing a lot? Would they really try and dominate the game? Would they really be front-footed in the first half especially? Probably not. What they would probably do in the league is allow us to position and just try and hit us on the break. But this is a playoff game. You know, the stakes are a lot higher. And this home league is absolutely crucial for West Brom. If they go out of this game and they're drawing or losing, they're up against it away from home. But if they come out of this game up 1-2-0, it changes the whole landscape. And that's the difference. How you predict the opposition is a lot of a manager's job. Will West Brom be front-footed, try and press early, try and be really aggressive and front-footed, or will they do what they would do in the league and be more passive and be like, you can have 60%, 70% of the ball, and we're going to hit you up with direct counter-attack. Anything can happen. Do they know we're going to set up? What, what way are we going to set up? 
Oh, we just did a new system. Are we going to play that? Are we going to play a normal way? These are all questions that you have to basically just guess the answer to. And that's what I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see if West Brom will see this home leg and go, we have to win this game by two goals. We have to be front-footed. We have to just attack, especially in the first half, to try and get a goal or two. Or will they just play it normally and just go, we will hit them on the break and we will hopefully score goals? Because that's where I'm sort of conflicted because obviously if they're going to be front-footed and very press heavy or maybe just going for it early in the first half obviously the three at the back or the five at the back whatever way you want to see it would work better because we'd have no doubt less of the ball would have more pressure on us so that extra center back would give us cover and then obviously we can play a more direct counter-attacking like we did against Leeds but then if they don't do that and we play the three at the back then we're losing an attacker we're losing a midfielder we're losing an abil- a player with the ability to control the game so it's going to be an interesting one how I would probably set up I'm very much a, at home, go for it, attack them, pressure, be front-footed, aggressive, away from home, be a bit more passive, you know, for me going into an away game, it's more important to keep a clean sheet away from home than it is to keep a clean sheet at home, it's more important to score more goals at home, for me, because you want, like the fans can get behind a team that's really attacking, and away from home, it's more crucial to sort of make sure you get that clean sheet, make sure you defend well, and then try and get the goals in the break. Because that's typically how it is for a lot of teams, and obviously we're a little bit different because obviously one of the best teams in the league, so typically a lot of teams are going to sit back off us, they're going to allow us to have all the possession, but being a playoff game, it could be different. I think West Brom will actually go for it. I think it's one of those games where it goes, you've only got one chance to win it. Are they going to be able to turn it around at Southampton? (laughs) Who knows? (laughs) With our form, who knows? But you've got to see it, though, in this way that Southampton are the favourites, right? We are the favourites. And their away leg for us first time, they've got to win it. So that's how I see it. I, I think at home, we will win. But obviously, aggregate comes into it. The West Brom beat us 2-0. And then we're like, oh, shit, we only win 1-0 or 2-1 or 3-2 or something crazy like that. I feel like they have to win this game by 2. I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to be honest, <laughs> I could be out of line here, but I do think that West Brom have to go for it and win 2-0. So I think the three at the back system, or the five, or whatever you want to see it, I think that's sort of the system we need for this game. And then at home, we play our normal four at the back, um, being a bit more uh, position heavy, but more dominant on the ball and really trying to control the tempo of the game. So yeah, that's that's how I go. So if I was to do my predicted lineup, I'd probably play the exact team that played against Leeds, down to exact indiv- individuals. Because, I mean, you can't chuck Lumley in now in the playoffs when McCarthy's played the four games Mizuno's injured. So he's basically solidified himself as the starter for the rest of the season. And I think Manning pl- has played well the last couple games, but the problem with Manning is he's he doesn't have a balance. He's either overly aggressive defensively and gives away fouls and gets a yellow card and then you're like, well, shit, I have to sub him off. Or he is absolutely asleep defensively and doesn't know what the fuck he's doing and implies zero pressure and just lets someone overlap or someone run past him with basically no pressure on the ball. So I think Manning obviously should start, but it's just like, can he find balance in his game where he's not so overly aggressive or so non-aggressive? Like, can he find that balance so he doesn't get yellow cards in the first 20 minutes? He doesn't take people out for no reason. He's a bit smarter with his positioning. And I think definitely with the free at the back, it helps him because obviously he doesn't have to be as defensive, right? He can be a bit more attacking than he would obviously in a back four, but he just needs to not, like, get yellow card in the first 15 minutes and basically put us all on the edge of our seat thinking he's just going to get a second yellow and they're all fucked. So let's preferably not do that, Manning. But other than that, I think the same team, Adams... And Adam Armstrong up front, Ariba obviously downs, probably a small bow midfield, and then obviously the back three will be obvious, Stevens, Benrack, Harwood, and then right back, obviously, Walker-Peters. I think that's sort of the system we should play this game. I think if we come out of this game with a, a draw, I think we can be very confident that we can get it over the line in the home league. And then obviously if we get a win, that'd be even better. But I think we have to be more defensively sound because if we come out of this with a loss, it's going to make the home league a lot harder. So I think 100% play this sort of the system we played against Leeds, because I do think, in my non-expert opinion, that West Brom will go for it in the first half. I think they'll really push and try to get an early goal, early two goals maybe, really put us under pressure and make us make mistakes, because we do. We do make mistakes against Leeds. We played a great game, but it was a mistake. Stevens lost the ball, Ben Rack shit clearance, they scored. So we will make mistakes, and I think West Brom, if they press us well enough and they attack us well enough, I think we will give them a few chances. So I think that should be their game plan, really. But I'm no professional coach, so don't take that at face value. Which is take it at face value, yeah. Don't take it with any sort of professionalism. Before my prediction, um, I think we'll beat West Brom over two legs. I'm confident about that. 
playoff final against any of them, if it's uh, Norwich or Leeds, doesn't matter. I think it's going to be complete roll of the dice. I think anyone on their day can win. It's the same as West Brom. Anyone on their day can win. I mean, they're the top six for a reason, right? Three to six, obviously, is good enough for a reason to get promoted to the Premier League. So I think for me, I think I think it'll be a 2-1 win. I think it will win 2-1. It'll be a very close game, I think. And then we'll finish it in the home league, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I say that hopefully. But I don't think anyone should write off West Brom in the slightest. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a playoff game. Coming into the game with form doesn't particularly matter. Coming in with you know, having a better team on, on the team sheet doesn't matter, right? Better team on paper doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's two games. From a 46-game season, it comes down to two games. Then obviously a third if you get through. So anything can happen. We can't go into this game thinking, oh, we're going to walk past these fucking idiots and they'll win the playoffs with ease. So yeah, 2-1 win prediction. I'm being optimistic, of course. I mean, the Leeds result obviously was a big one and it was away from home as well. So we could see us set up like that again. But let me know your guys' predictions, your guys' thoughts. Obviously, we'll be live for the game. I'm probably going to do a long stream, so I'll start at, I don't know, like 10 a.m. or something, and then obviously go through all the way to the end of the game. I'm going to be dead tired, but it is what it is. I'm going to get some Cokes or something, get some sugar in me. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited. I am excited to watch this because I feel like it's like cup final. It honestly is like a cup final. Like we've made the EFL cup final in 2018. Or was it 2017? No, it's 2017. It feels like that, you know, it feels like there's just so much to play for with only a game or two or three, you know. It's exciting times, it's my first ever time watching us in a playoff, so it's going to be interesting, but hopefully we get over the line because I don't want to watch Championship ever again. <laughs> Premier League it is, mate. But that's it for this video. I don't even know if this was good, I feel like I just talk shit, but that's kind of how it is these days. Um, it's fucking cold, so I'm blaming that. It's like, I would normally record an hour and a half ago, but I've been so cold, like I've i got a blanket on, but don't test me. It's fucking cold now. It's winter in New Zealand, and I'm bloody hating it. It's currently 13 degrees in this room after putting heaters on for an hour, two heaters on for an hour. It is still 13 degrees, and I don't want to be in this cold room ever again, but it is what it is. But I'll see you boys for the playoff game. Uh, we'll do, like, I don't know, watch some videos or play some FM or something like that before the game happens. Um, but I'll see you boys then. Hopefully... We get off to a good start in the first league and cement ourselves into the playoff final would be nice. Maybe a 17-0 win. That'd be good. I'll take that. Um, but yeah, like, subscribe if you enjoyed. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you boys there. And I'll say it again. Hopefully, touch wood. This is I don't even think this is wood, but we'll take it. Uh, we make it all the way to the Premier League.